Hello, dear friends. Welcome again to a new week. My name is Dwayne Esmond, and I get to be your tour guide, hopefully this week, and I'm honored that you would join me. I hope you know how blessed we are to have the Word of God and to be able to study it in relative peace and safety. There will come a time when we won't be able to do that. In fact, as we draw closer to God in His Word this week, as we study this week's lesson, know that He is coming closer to us, that His coming is even at the door. Well, this week, our study in this theme of the great controversy is the foundation of God's government. God's government has a foundation. Foundations are important. Buildings don't go up right without a good foundation. If the edifice is going to stand and, and be buffeted by the winds and the storms of life, it has to be built on a good foundation. And God has a great foundation for the building of his world, of his way of being, of his truth, of his righteousness, of his judgment. God has a foundation on which he builds all of his principles by which he operates. Well, let's look and see what exactly God is talking about. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17, our memory text this week, the Bible says that the dragon was wroth and raged with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Those who do two things, they keep the commandments of God and those who have the faith of Jesus. They keep the commandments of God. They have the faith of Jesus. When early Adventists came through the great disappointment, struggling to understand why Jesus did not come, their study took them into the sanctuary. And as they studied the earthly sanctuary, they discovered that heavenly sanctuary, of which the earthly sanctuary was but a pattern. And that earthly sanctuary held something very precious. It held the Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place. And that Ark of the Covenant, above it the mercy seat, above it the Shekinah glory of God. But in that Ark was the law of the testimony, the Ten Commandments that God had given Moses. That law, transcript of God's character, was precious, it was sacred, it was important. But a study of the scripture also taught them that that law was a transcript of something else that existed way beyond their present reality and beyond the sanctuary of earth. In fact, they looked, Revelation chapter 11 and verse 19 being one of those scriptures, and saw that John saw up in heaven the sanctuary open and the most holy place, and there was the Ark of the Covenant, there the law of God again, there the mercy seat on the great day of atonement. You remember the, our study of that. On the great day of atonement, the, 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 the priest, the high priest would bring the blood and sprinkle it uh, on behalf of the people on the mercy seat. There we see the mercy of God right above the judgment of God. This is a powerful point. The mercy of God above the judgment of God. In that sanctuary, in that Ark of the Covenant, in those Ten Commandments is the Sabbath commandment, which anchors God as our creator. It is pivotal that we understand that the Sabbath is perpetual. You can't, God didn't do away with that. The Sabbath is perpetual. The Sabbath is a part of the sanctuary. And the Sabbath is a part of God's means of defining his loyalty, the loyalty of his people at the end of time. Those who will re, uh, receive the mark of the beast and those who will not. I I'm here to tell you, beloved, this study this week is critical because we are getting into the deep waters. We're going to learn this week that the Sabbath, the sanctuary, the law of God, the end of time, the mark of the beast, all related. God bless you.